you have a video on becoming a Kardashev type one civilization. What, what What's our hope for doing that? We're a few orders of magnitude away from that. Yeah, it is surprising. I think people tend to think that we're close to this this scale. The, the Kardashev type one is defined as a civilization which is using as much energy as is essentially instant upon the planet from the star. Um, so that's a order, I think, for the Earth of something like 10 to the 5 terawatts or 10 to the 7 terawatts. It's a, it's a gigantic amount of energy. And we're using a, a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of that right now. So um, you know, if you became a Kardashev type 1 civilization, which is seen not necessarily as a goal into itself, I think people think, well, why, why are we aspiring to become this energy-hungry civilization? You know, surely... Um, uh, our energy needs might become, you know, might improve, improve our efficiency or something as time goes on. But ultimately, the more energy you have access to, the greater your capabilities will be. I mean, if you want to lift Mount Everest into space, there is just a calculable amount of potential energy change that that's going to take in order to accomplish that. And the more energy you have access to as a civilization, then clearly the easier that energy achievement is going to be. So it depends on what your aspirations are as a civilization. It might not be something you want to ever do, but... Well, but it, w we should make clear that lifting heavy things isn't the only thing. It's uh, it's just doing work. So yeah. it could be computation. It could, right, be, right. it could be more and more and more and more sophisticated and larger and larger and larger computation, which is, it does seem where we're headed with the uh, v very fast increase in... Um, the the scale and the quality of our computation outside the human brain, yeah. artificial computation. Yeah, I mean, computation is a great example of, I mean, already I think something like 10 percent of US power electricity use is going towards these supercomputing centers. So there's a yeah. there's a vast amount of our current energy needs which are already going towards computing and will surely only increase over time. Um, if we start ever doing anything like mind uploading or creating simulated realities that that cost will surely become almost a, a dominant source of our energy requirements at that point if civilization completely moves over to this kind of post-humanism stage. And so it's not unreasonable that our energy needs would continue to grow. Certainly historically, they always have at about 2% per year. And so if that continues, there is going to be a certain point um, where you're running up against the amount of energy which you can harvest because it's you're using, every, even if you cover the entire planet in solar panels, um, there's no more energy to be had. Um, and so this is a, you know, there's a few ways of achieving this. I sort of talked about in the video how there were several renewable energy sources that we're excited about, like geothermal, wind power, waves, but pretty much all of those don't really scratch the surface or don't really scratch the itch of getting to a Kardashev type one civilization. They're meaningful now. I would never tell anybody don't do wind power now because it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. clearly useful at our current stage of a civilization, but it's not it's going to be a pretty negligible fraction of our energy requirements if we got to that stage of development. And so there has to be a breakthrough in either our ability to harvest solar energy, which would require maybe something like a space array of solar panels of beaming the energy back down, mm -hmm. or some developments uh, and innovations in, in nuclear fusion that would allow us to essentially reproduce the same process of what's producing the solar photons, but here on Earth. Um, but even that comes with some consequences. If you're generating the energy here on Earth and you're doing work on it on Earth, then that work is going to produce waste heat, and that waste heat is going to increase the ambient temperature of the planet. And so, you, whether even if this isn't really a, a greenhouse effect that you're increasing the temperature of the planet, this is just the amount of computers that are churning. You yeah. put your hand to a computer, you can feel the warmth coming off them. If you do that much work, of <laughs> literally the you know the entire instant energy of the planet is doing that work. Uh, the planet is going to warm up significantly as a result of that, and so you know that's uh, it. That clearly indicates that this is not a sustainable path. That civilizations, as they approach Kardashev Type One, are going to have to leave planet Earth, which is really the point of that video to show that it's a Kardashev Type One civilization. Even though it's defined as instant energy upon a planet, that is not a species that is going to still be living on their planet at least. Um, in isolation. They will have to be harvesting energy from afar. They will have to be you doing work on that energy outside of their planet because otherwise you're going to dramatically change the environment in which you live. Well, yeah, so the, the, it's, uh, the more energy you create, the more energy you use, the more the higher the imperative to expand out into the universe, but also not, not just the imperative, but the, uh, the capabilities 